Hello, everyone. Um, since APC's youth mission is scheduled for October 30th to November 1st, um, and as a result, you know, we've been asked to record our lectures for the classes that are originally scheduled on those days. Uh, so please um, ensure that you listen to the two class lectures for October 30th. And if you have any questions about uh, what has been taught in these uh, two class lectures, uh, please feel free to post them in Google Classroom and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, for the e-learning students, uh, please use the discussion page uh, for your questions. Okay, so we'll continue our uh, study on the Kingdom Builders. Uh, we began studying uh, chapter four last week, uh, the nature of a God-given vision. And um, when we're talking about vision uh, and dreams, we're not just meaning the supernatural spiritual experiences that God uses to speak to us uh, through dreams when we are asleep or, or visions that we see but we are also referring to the ideas, the plans, the purposes, the goals and strategies that the Holy Spirit births in his people. So he's giving us a vision, a, a plan, a purpose he wants us to fulfill. And so that is what we are going to be talking about uh, in this lesson about the nature of a God-given uh, vision. And we began studying this uh, chapter last week, and uh, we began looking at the 11 insights concerning uh, God-given vision. Uh, the first one we said is that a God-given vision is a divine command and an authorization. We already studied that. The second one is that a God-given vision is often uh, detected by simple steering in our uh, hearts. So when God uh, you know, leads us uh, or gives us a vision to do something here on earth, it, uh, you know, just comes through a, a, a small stirring in our heart, uh, which he uses to get our um, attention, okay? So one of the examples we looked at was Moses. We read in um, Acts chapter 7, verse 23, that, you know, when Moses was 40 years old, it just came in his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And uh, Moses says that, you know, he just knew in his heart that, you know, God was raising him up to deliver his people out of um, Egypt. Okay. Uh, another example um, uh, we can look at is Nehemiah. Uh, we read in Nehemiah chapter 1, uh, verses 1 to 4, that, you know, um, uh, there was um, uh, Hanani who came from Jerusalem and, you know, he just uh, shared with Nehemiah uh, concerning the city of Jerusalem. And uh, when Nehemiah hears that the, the walls of Jerusalem uh, were broken down, the gates are burned with fire, you know, uh, what was the result of what he heard? Uh, he was very broken. He sat down, verse 4 of chapter 1 says he's, he just wept and he moaned for many days days and he was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Now, if other, you know, uh, Jews would have heard this, they would have felt uh, bad, but they wouldn't have reacted, it, reacted in a way that Nehemiah um, uh, reacted. Now, why was, uh, you know, Nehemiah reacting this way is because, you know, basically there was a stirring within him, uh, you know, to do something about uh, the, the situation uh, in Jerusalem of the broken walls and, uh, uh, you know, this broken city walls. And so we see that he wept and moaned and fasted and prayed about the city walls. So it's important that, you know, we stir, uh, you know, when God... Uh, uh, is stirring up our hearts to do something, you know, he's basically uh, leading us to uh, fulfill a plan and a purpose or vision that he has uh, for us uh, uh, to do or, uh, you know, an agenda that he has for us or a purpose he has uh, in our lives to uh, fulfill, okay? And so we see that, you know, um, uh, Nehemiah just did not uh, fast and weep and moan, but, uh, you know, he... Uh, went about doing something that was stirring his heart. He went eventually went to um, uh, Jerusalem. And in the beginning, we see that, you know, in Nehemiah 2, verse 12, Nehemiah does not tell anyone what God had put in his heart to do at 
Jerusalem when he reaches uh, uh, Jerusalem. But then later on, we see that, you know, he reveals uh, God's plan and purpose and vision, and the people come together and they begin to build the walls of uh, Jerusalem. So uh, a God-given vision can just begin with, uh, you know, a, a stirring in our hearts, um, and we can know what God is calling us to do when he is stirring our hearts. The third thing is that a God-given vision has an appointed time for initiation and uh, execution. Okay, uh, We know that uh, we studied all of this in, full, uh, in uh, receiving God's guidance. And, uh, you know, just reiterating that here, uh, you know, we one example we can read of is in Acts chapter 7, verses 17 and 20. Um, it's, uh, it says, you know, when the time... Uh, of the promise drew near it's talking about abraham but when the time the time here is talking about the chronos time but when the time of the promise drew near which god had sown to abraham the people grew and multiplied in uh, egypt and at this time which is uh, the kairos moment you know uh, moses was born and was well pleasing to god and he was brought up in his father's house for uh, uh, three months. So, you know, the the promise that God gave Abraham, you know, many years back that his uh, descendants uh, will be as um, slaves in an unknown land uh, for 400 years. And so that is the, uh, from the time that God spoke to Abraham, uh, Till the time, you know, when Moses was born is the chronological time, the linear time uh, when uh, God was working out his plans. And at uh, the, uh, the the that is called the chronological time or the chronos time. And at the God appointed time, which is a kairos time or the fullness of time, uh, we see that, you know, uh, 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 God, uh, you know, uh, caused Moses to be born and he was brought up uh, in a Pharaoh's household. Uh, he was there with his pa parents for three months and then he was born, uh, brought up in Pharaoh's household and how, you know, God used him to um, deliver the people out of uh, Egypt. Um, so we see that God works in uh, uh, chronos time and uh, that is a chronological time, the duration of time or number of days uh, during which time he is basically, uh, you know, uh, preparing the person or, you know, bringing about, uh, you know, what he is going to do at the Kairos moment. The Kairos moment is the fullness of time or the God appointed time. Uh, time. Now, um, it's important that, you know, uh, for uh, God to initiate his plan, his purpose and his vision in the fullness of time, you know, uh, it requires us to work with God uh, uh, regarding the, um, you know, the inner attitudes of our heart, our characteristics, and also how God, you know, works externally uh, to prepare things uh, so that he can bring about uh, you know, what he has planned or his vision uh, in the Kairos uh, moment. Okay, So there is a, a you know, Kairos moment, uh, f uh, you know, a time or a season for the initiation and the execution of God-given vision. But, you know, both external and internal factors are very, very uh, important to determine, uh, you know, uh, when God would initiate the uh, Kairos moment. So what are some of the external factors? External factors are, you know, a place or places where God prepares the place, whether it's a city, the en uh, environment or a region uh, where God is going to release his work or what he has planned and purpose or uh, you know uh, he will also uh, you know um, uh, 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 raise up people uh, in addition to the person who is going to become the vision bearer who is going to give birth to the vision uh, in the Kairos moment God will also you know uh, raise up um, uh, Many other people who can uh, come alongside the vision bearer and work alongside them uh, to fulfill the vision that he has given the vision uh, bearer. Or sometimes God can also remove the hindrances uh, that are there in the way. And, uh, you know, also sometimes, you know, the previous generation uh, uh, have, must have run its course and makes its way for the 
next generation okay and uh, god also works uh, uh, in the life of uh, the vision bearer things that are surrounding the life of the vision bearer whether it's his finances his family just you know is preparing them so all this happens during the uh, chronological uh, time uh, period or the chronos uh, time where god brings all of this together you know so that he can fulfill uh, or bring about his purposes in the kairos moment so what are the internal factors the internal factors uh, include uh, you know uh, things like a right heart attitude uh, uh, of the vision bearer the people who are working uh, right relationships with people maturity and um, you know spiritual development in seven, several areas of the person's life a uh, personal discipline whether it's about home family bringing things in order you know uh, also getting the person to have a, a servant like attitude uh, having a heart of a servant uh, 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 you know teaching them to be faithful in little things and also developing a, a christ like character so these are some of the internal factors and we also saw some of the external factors that god uh, prepares in the chronological uh, time sequence so that he can uh, bring about his vision in the kairos uh, moment now uh, the kairos moment uh, depends on the vision bearer or depends on the people that god has you know uh, uh, given this uh, his vision to or communicated his vision to so um, you know sorry about that sorry um yeah so um we can either hasten or delay the kairos moments in our lives uh, depending on how you know uh, we are cooperating with god in progressing in the internal factors in our uh, life so if you want to hasten uh, uh, you know uh, the time period uh, you want to you know get into uh, fulfilling god's purpose for your life or the plan or the vision that he has and uh, you know you want to get past the chronological time sequence uh, quick uh, and you don't want to delay things it depends on how well we progress in the inter factors whether you know how quickly we are developing the right heart attitudes or right relationships with people you know a spiritual maturity spiritual development possessing a heart of a servant how faithful we are in the little things that god has given to us and in christ like um, character okay so even as we live our lives uh, you know i I'm, I'm not sure if you've noticed uh, or you can begin to notice you know life is lived in um, in seasons and stages and uh, phases and this means you know in our life there will be several chronos phases where god is preparing us uh, for you know uh, something that he wants to birth in and through us a plan and a purpose or a vision and there is also a kairos moments that god takes us through along the way where he is using us you know to fulfill his plan and purpose for our um, lives and uh, uh, like we read in first chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 you know it says there that the sons of issachar had an understanding standing of the times you know uh, they knew what israel had to do in that time and that season so it's also important for us to recognize the times and seasons that god is taking us through uh, even as he you know um, unfolds his kingdom plans and purposes and causes his vision and dreams to fulfill through our lives the fourth one is a god given vision requires a preparation now part of the journey into fulfilling a god given vision is the prepare preparation process we looked at it quite in detail in fulfilling god's purpose for our lives um, we know that you know when god um, before he fulfills a plan and purpose in our life he takes us through the preparation uh, process and you know um, uh, uh, it takes time 
you know, uh, for God to prepare us and uh, make us who he wants us to be before he manifests the vision, the calling, the gifting through um, us. So what are the, some of the things that God does during the preparation process? You know, uh, you know, he uh, helps us develop in our own personal spiritual walk with God, in our growth in uh, Christ-like character. Uh, and during the preparation process, God can also, you know, give us opportunities to associate associate ourselves and work alongside other leaders and, you know, um, uh, help them, uh, you know, uh, fulfill their dreams and visions, uh, 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 fulfill their dream and vision that God has placed in their lives. And, you know, when we are helping them to fulfill their dreams and vision, it's a time period where God is preparing us, where he is training us uh, to be equipped to fulfill God's dreams or his vision for our our very um, lives and during our time of preparation sometimes you know um, uh, we might uh, find ourselves uh, you know doing things that might not seem uh, directly related to the vision that God has given to us or he's put in our hearts uh, you know um, uh, things that we are compelled to do and go through uh, sometimes will not make sense and you know doesn't seem relevant to what we are carrying in our hearts and you know um, uh, it uh, sometimes it might be uh, seemingly very disconnected uh, or a very disconnected season of life that we are uh, going through. But we need to understand that, you know, during those times when we are doing things that, you know, does not seem relevant or seems uh, disconnected, but still God is preparing us and developing us in the areas of our life that are important for fulfilling uh, the vision that he has for us. I remember that, you know, just to give you uh, from my own life example, I remember after I came back uh, home from Bible college, I knew that God was leading me to, uh, uh, you know, do children's ministry, but I was not very sure about that, you know, um, and I was looking for ministry opportunities. I was not getting ministry opportunities anywhere. And, um, you know, God uh, put me in a place uh, with the uh, Youth uh, for Christ where I was uh, doing some little teaching uh, with students. And that helped me to develop as a teacher, you know, teach children in schools, even teach in the Bible college, uh, develop my skills of teaching. And also I remember during that time period, I think it was almost for two years, you know, I um, uh, was working for a professor in theology who was writing books. So it's basically, uh, you know, come compiling and editing his books on Old Testament characters, and uh, they are still used worldwide uh, in various theological schools. And I did not understand why I was doing that, you know, because I was not uh, good at writing. I was not good at compiling or editing. Uh, I know that, you know, I'm not a good writer and I'm not a uh, call for writing. I do. I love to write well. Um, but I was wondering, you know, why am I, what am I doing uh, here? And, you know, I was, it was, seems so disconnected, didn't seem relevant. I didn't seem uh, enjoying what I was doing. I, I didn't like sitting in front of a computer the whole day and working on something. I like relating to people. But I, and when I look back, I realized, you know, why God took me through that season of two years is because later after that, when God brought me into doing uh, children's ministry, you know, uh, I began writing curriculum and, uh, you know, uh, the two year writing period, the things that I learned, you know, helped me uh, to write curriculum. So I was, uh, I started writing um a curriculum that I, uh, a project that I initiated for teens uh, and uh, that I worked on that project for five years and it was like my baby, I loved it and also wrote the curriculum for that. And then when I joined APC in 2008, I started, uh, you know, the school outreach ministry. Again, I found myself uh, writing the curriculum, the scripture curriculum uh, for um, APC school outreach ministry. And then when, you know, uh, the door opened for me to uh, minister and take over children's church as children's church pastor. I also started writing uh, the APC children's church curriculum. Uh, uh, and then, you know, now uh, since we are not allowed to uh, take scripture to schools because of the... Uh, 
laws that are enforced in our land. And now I'm writing uh, another curriculum on life skills for uh, children. But when I look back, you know, those two years seem so disconnected, uh, not relevant in what I was doing. I did not enjoy it. Uh, but I now when I look back, I know that God was preparing me uh, and developing de develop me in that area of life uh, so that I can, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in this phase, in this season of my life, uh, write curriculums that are uh, uh, beneficial for uh, children. Uh, so we need to understand that, you know, preparation time is never wasted time. And our focus should be on, uh, you know, what God is calling us to do and being submissive, yielded and obedient uh, to his working in our lives in each uh, season. Okay, we'll just look at uh, uh, a few preparation uh, uh, time seasons of, uh, you know, a few characters in the Bible. Uh, we see that, you know, Joseph, uh, 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 we know that when he was 17 years old, uh, Joseph was sold uh, as a slave uh, into Egypt. And when he was 30 years old uh, was when he was brought out of uh, prison and he was made uh, the prime minister or the overseer over all of Egypt. So we see that he spends 13 years uh, in Egypt before he was you know, elevated to his position of being a prime minister. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, he spent 13 years, uh, you know, uh, uh, in Potiphar's house and in prison uh, before he was, um, you know, uh, elevated to the post of uh, being a prime minister over all of uh, Egypt. Okay. And we see that again in that, in that post as a prime minister, he uh, served faithfully for another nine years. When Joseph was 39 years old, it was the first time he got to see his brothers. And, you know, it was probably 41 years, he was probably 41 years old when he met his father, uh, Jacob. So it approx took approximately 30 years from the time he had the dreams, uh, uh, you know, uh, of the sun and the moon and the stars bowing down to him and the, the 11 stars bowing down to him and also his brother sheaves bowing down to his uh, sheaf. And um, uh, we see that it took 30 years uh, from the time, uh, you know, the dream was given to him to the Kairos moment when the dream was being uh, fulfilled. Okay. And then he spent another 70 years doing what God wanted him to do. And he died when he was 110 uh, years old. So um, for Joseph, you know, uh, this happened when he was, uh, you know, uh, it took almost uh, 30 years, uh, you know, of preparation uh, time. Now we look at uh, Moses and um, also David and Paul, and all of these uh, are the same content that we looked at in uh, when we studied uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life. So I'm just going to mention this quickly and then move on. You know, uh, uh, we know that from Acts chapter 7, 7, verse 22, it was 40 years old when Moses had a stirring in his heart, knew in his heart that, you know, uh, it, God had called him to or raised him up to deliver his uh, people uh, out of uh, Egypt. And we know that he tried to do this in his own ability, in his own strength that landed him in the wilderness and where he spent 40 long years taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. And at the age of 80, you know, uh, God called him um, and sent him to uh, deliver his people out of um, uh, Egypt. So it took 40 years, you know, uh, 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 before you know, from the time of calling to the, uh, you know, to the time of uh, fulfilling uh, God's plan and his purpose for his um, life. Uh, another person that we can look at is David. David was uh, around 13 years old when he was anointed king by Samuel. And we see that probably he would have been 15 to 17 years of age when, uh, you know, when he killed Goliath and he became a national hero. And uh, ever since that time, you know, Saul uh, sought to kill David and David was running away from uh, Saul. He lived like a vagabond. He lived in caves in the wilderness. Um, and when Saul died, you know, it was, uh, 
uh, David was around 23 years old. And then God tells him to go to Hebron where he was, you know, uh, he was made king by only one tribe, uh, that is Judah. And when David was 30 years old, you know, he was finally made king over all of Israel and uh, Judah. Okay, so all of Israel recognized him as king and he reigned for 40 years. So we see that, you know, for in David's life, there was 17 years of preparation time from the time that God uh, called him uh, to be the king, anointed him to be the king by prophet Samuel to the time that he stepped in to his calling as king over all Israel at the age of uh, 30. And we know that during this preparation time, you know, uh, 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 God brought men, uh, 400 men who, you know, and uh, David and these men fought battles and uh, that was preparing him to become uh, the king of um, Israel. And these uh, 400 men, you know, joined uh, 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 David's army and some of them were also generals in his army. Okay, we'll uh, look at another character in the Bible, Paul. Paul must have been 33 years old when he had encountered uh, 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 Jesus on the road to Damascus. And then he lived three years in Damascus and uh, in Arabia. And during the time when he was in Arabia, you know, he received revelations of the gospel that he uh, preaches uh, uh, later on, which he writes uh, later on in his epistles. And we see that, you know, he spent... Um, then 13 years in the regions of Tarsus and Syria and Sicilia, uh, you know, just uh, basically preaching here and there. Uh, and then after the end of those 13 years, you know, Barnabas comes to Tarsus and uh, brings Saul uh, to Antioch. And they spend a whole year uh, teaching, uh, Paul spends a whole year teaching the church at Antioch. And, you know, then he goes down to uh, uh uh, to Jerusalem and spend some time there. And so, you know, it is uh, uh, after which, you know, after 17 years from his um, uh, uh, encounter with uh, Jesus on the road to Damascus to his first missionary journey uh, when he was 50 years old. So it was basically 17 years of preparation time, uh, you know, before he launched out into his first uh, missionary journey. So these 50, 17 years, sorry, these 17 years are referred to as silent years of Paul, uh, you know, where uh, he uh, preaches here and there, uh, but he receives most of his revelation. And then we see that, you know, he gets on, he steps into his uh, apostolic ministry uh, after 17 years of his encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to uh, Damascus. So we see that God is in no hurry. Even in the life of Paul, he had to go through 17 years of preparation and uh, training. Uh, just another other example is Jeremiah. Jeremiah was given his prophetic call even before he was born and God told him not to allow people to tell him that he was too young, uh, you know, but uh, we know historically, we know that Jeremiah waited at least 16 years from the time of the visitation. We read that, uh, we read in chapter one uh, to his first prophetic utterance, he had to wait 16 years. So what do we learn from all of these um, uh, characters in the Bible is that every God-given vision has its appointed time for uh, initiation, execution, and uh, fulfillment, okay? Uh, and also, uh, when God takes us through this preparation time, uh, you know, uh, it's a period of waiting, uh, waiting to, you know, for uh, God to initiate and carry out his God-given vision that he's giving us. And also, it does not mean that when we are waiting for God uh, to bring, uh, for the Kairos moment when he's going to uh, birth his vision or his purpose in our lives, it does not mean that, you know, we should just sit around idle, not doing anything, uh, you know, waiting and being idle are uh, two different things. 
um, you know, uh, being idle is being inactive. Um, it's uh, doing nothing. But during the preparation time, although that we, although we are waiting for God uh, to, you know, uh, initiate His plan and purpose, His vision, uh, we need to be actively involved in doing what God uh, assigns us uh, during this waiting uh, period. Okay, so uh, just a few examples for Joseph during his waiting period he had to serve with excellence in Potiphar's house later in the prison uh, for Moses he had to take care of his father-in-law's uh, sheep you know uh, David uh, he raised up an army the 400 men that got sent to him he engaged in important battles and during when he was fighting these battles he learned to hear from God to trust in God for his victories the, so dependence on God and also we look at in Paul's life you know uh, he received abundance of revelation uh, which he eventually preached thought and uh, wrote about okay so uh, even in our journey with God, you know, uh, the preparation process never ends. You know, every season of life uh, God takes us through, you know, he prepares us for the next season of life. So every season is really a preparation period or a time for the next season of our life. So what do we do uh, during the preparation uh, phase or the journey that uh, uh, God is taking us through is that we remain, you know, in a constant state of just learning, uh, growing, uh, maturing, spiritually, uh, grow, uh, spiritually growing in our walk with God, spiritual maturity, uh, growing into Christ's likeness, uh, you know, and also, uh, 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 you know, uh, growing strong in our uh, 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 emotional uh, well-being uh, and into Christ's likeness. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, the fifth thing that uh, you know. Um, uh, that God takes us through uh, when he gives us a God-given vision is the unfolding of a God-given vision may differ from our uh, expectation, okay? Uh, so, you know, even as um, God gives us a plan and a purpose that he wants to unfold in our lives, you know, sometimes it can be very different uh, from what we imagined or what we expected, but we must remain open to whatever God uh, is doing in our lives, what he is causing to bring about in our lives uh, and what we are seeing in reality. Uh, um, and we should not get, uh, you know, uh, upset or disappointed because things are not going the way we imagined or expected. But it's important that, you know, uh, uh, to see the dream fulfilled, uh, uh, you know, we need to be patient with God. We need to go through uh, what he is taking us through, learn through those things. And what is important is seeing the dream fulfilled and not the way it happens okay uh, i'll just give you a few examples so we can understand uh, for a, uh, for example joseph you know uh, when joseph gave uh, when god gave him all those dreams he would never have imagined that his brothers his own brothers would so sell him off as a slave and that he would be falsely accused of things that he has never done and he will end up as a prisoner you know imagine a rich man's son you know getting down to the position of a slave and then ending up in uh, prison before he was elevated uh, to becoming the prime minister of um, Egypt. Uh, uh, Moses' example, you know, when we look at, uh, think about Moses' life, you know, we probably would never have imagined that, you know, one act of uh, administering justice, you know, for his own uh, Hebrew brother would result him in spending, uh, you know, 40 years in the uh, wilderness, okay, and running away from his own family, his people, and from his own calling and uh, purpose. So suddenly from living in a palace in Egypt, he was a war homeless wanderer in the wilderness uh, that he ended up in, okay. Or think about David, you know, um, uh, he was anointed as king, but he had no you know, clue uh, that he would end up, you know, uh, running away, protecting, uh, you know, trying to save his own life from uh, uh, the king. And he would end up living in caves and um, in the uh, wilderness. Okay. Now, um, uh, 
you know, God imparts dreams uh, in our lives, but even as he does, uh, you know, um, uh, sometimes the, f the fulfillment to those dreams and visions is difficult, is different from what we expected. It can be longer than what we expected or we thought it would take, but we need to stay the course and see his vision uh, fulfilled. Okay. Like I was giving you an example of me working with that professor. I just didn't, could not see what God was doing. I just couldn't understand. It was frustrating time of my life. It was a, a very difficult time of my life, especially, you know, the, the travel, uh, to, from my play uh, to my from my house to his house was long it was hard he was a difficult taskmaster like pharaoh uh, and i was doing something that i absolutely did not enjoy it was not my skill was not what i uh, liked uh, but i ended up there for two long years and you know uh, but now when i look back you know i just see how god took me there and how he enabled me to grow in the skills of writing and now you know he's using me to write those curriculums and he's already used me to write curriculums that people are uh, using okay now what god is about to unfold through our lives is not dependent on what we have who we are or even where we are today uh, but, you know, God's glory will be revealed uh, through his uh, people uh, who he chooses, uh, who depend and trust in him, uh, patient through the preparation uh, uh, time period, because we know that, you know, uh, God uh, uh, chooses the foolish, the weak, the unknown, the despised and the nothing, uh, you know, to fulfill his plan and his purposes um, uh, so that the glory will go to him. Okay. The sixth thing that we can, uh, you know, know when or understand uh, regarding God-given vision is that the Kairos moment for a God-given vision uh, gets delayed when attempted by uh, self, okay? So the typical example that we can uh, look back and uh, see is about uh, Moses. Yeah, we, know, we already looked at Moses' life, a couple of examples from his life, uh, uh, just give me a second, please. Yeah, uh, looking at um, uh, Moses' life, you know, uh, we see that even as God placed in his heart and he knew in his heart uh, his calling was to uh, deliver his um, uh, people from, God's people from, uh, you know, uh, from bondage, from slavery. Um, but he you know, didn't wait for God. He took matters in his own hands. And, you know, um, uh, and you see that, you know, um, sorry. Yeah. And we see that it delayed uh, things in Moses's uh, life, even though it was a Kairos moment where God brought about the birth of Moses uh, so that he could uh, you know, deliver his people. But when Moses took matters into his own hands, you know, uh, it delayed things uh, by 40 more uh, years. So even though there's a Kairos moment, uh, you know, or sometimes that there's Kairos moment for us uh, in, in our lives, you know, for God given vision, it can be delayed when, you know, uh, when we act. Uh, uh, you know, in our carnal nature, um, uh, when we do try to do things, attempt things in our own um, mind, uh, by our own selves, it uh, uh, delays uh, things, okay? So, um, we know that, you know, uh, Moses had to run away because the Pharaoh sought to kill him. He ended up killing an uh, Egyptian. Uh, so, you know, he had to live in the wilderness for 40 more uh, years and delay the whole process of the Kairos moment. So it is almost certain that many of us, you know, will make mistakes in our journey in pursuing the fulfillment of a God-given vision. Uh, and our mistakes can sometimes bring about delays, disappointments, and even uh, discouragement. But, you know, what we need to do is we need to... Uh, Acknowledge our mistakes before God, seek his forgiveness and ask him to realign our will uh, to his will. And God is greater than our 
mistakes and he can you know um, uh, uh, he can you know cause what the locust has eaten he can do things and change things in a shorter duration a shorter time uh, period okay so our mistakes can cause delays but our god is a restorer of time you know uh, what uh, you know uh, will take us normally many years to fulfill god can accelerate things um, and he can accomplish those things in a shorter time frame he can fulfill those things in a much shorter time um, frame okay like uh, we read in joel chapter 2 verse 25 that you know god says i will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten um, and you know uh, so that is a god that we serve and he can accelerate things and what may take many years to accomplish you know he can fulfill that in a shorter duration in a shorter time uh, span but what is important for us to learn is you know we need to learn from our past mistakes we need to become wiser and move ahead into the future you know pursuing his uh, vision uh, what he's put in our hearts and we need to pursue that with wisdom like Proverbs chapter 4 uh, verse 26 says ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be um, uh, established okay so we need to wis need wisdom and knowledge and understanding discernment to ponder the path of our feet uh, so that our ways will be uh, established um, now the seventh one uh, you know uh, that we are looking at uh, you know insights into understanding god given vision is that a god given vision may not be understood by uh, everyone okay going back to the example of moses you know even though moses knew in his heart uh, that god is raising him up to be a deliverer but the his brethren did not understand uh, understand uh, that okay so sometimes you know um, uh, people in our lives will not be able to see god's hand or his purpose or his plan or vision uh, in our um, uh, in our lives uh, another example that we can look at is you know when apostle paul had this powerful encounter on the road to damascus uh, we see that you know um, uh, uh, the church the believers you know they seem suspicious you know they some of them even withdrew from paul and paul had to spend a lot of time alone uh, but you know he had to stand all by himself uh, just holding on to the calling the vision that he had or uh, what god had given to him and strengthening himself in the lord and how do we know this he writes this in galatians chapter 5 uh, sorry galatians chapter 1 verse 16 uh, you know where he says i did not immediately confer with flesh and blood okay so you know uh, uh, we see that um, uh, you know uh, he does not talk about what his calling is, what his vision is, what God has asked him to do. Uh, so there are times like Apostle Paul, we must also, you know, learn, uh, you know, not to immediately confer with flesh and blood because people might not understand the God-given vision. We need to just hold on to that uh, and, uh, you know, um, uh, just wait for the opportune time when God wants us to reveal what he has placed in our uh, heart, okay? And we also need to understand that we don't need man's approval on a vision given to us by uh, God, we just need to simply hold on to what God has spoken to our hearts and, you know, let God bring the confirmation of his vision. He will send people, he will confirm what he has spoken in our hearts uh, to them. And, you know, uh, let God bring uh, the, you know, over time, God will bring the clarity, guidance and direction and wisdom that is required to carry out the vision and god will also send people you know who can counsel us guide us and show us on how to practically execute the vision in our hearts like for example in apostle paul's life you know he sends um, uh, ananias you know to lay hands on him and when he does you know uh, uh, paul is able to see and also you know uh, paul is uh, you know baptized in the holy spirit and also we see that you know barnabas goes all the way from antioch uh, to meet Paul uh, uh, in Tarsus and brings him to Antioch and how, you know, from there they begin uh, their journey, uh, uh, their, their missionaries, uh, missionary journeys, okay? And how 
Barnabas was instrumental in Paul's life as well. Okay, so God will show us the people. Uh, he will counsel us, guide us, show us uh, who we need to take on board, um, and you know uh, how we need to execute the vision in our hearts. But we need to be receptive to what God is speaking in our own lives. Uh, even as he sends uh, people uh, to minister to us and to teach us, to counsel us and to uh, guide us. Okay. Another thing about uh, God-given vision uh, is that we will face a demonic uh, opposition. A God-given vision will always face a demonic uh, opposition. Okay. Uh, because the devil is never happy uh, to see God authorizing, uh, you know, uh, someone to expand his kingdom uh, and to bring about damage to the works of darkness. Uh, but the devil will do whatever he can to oppose, to distract, to divert, to hinder, you know, uh, or uh, to lead us away from uh, doing, uh, you know, the work of the kingdom or to uh, lead us away from God-given vision and uh, calling, okay? Uh, but we need to, um, you know, uh, uh, be mindful of that. We need to recognize it. And we also, you know, come against every uh, attack and scheme uh, of the uh, enemy. So these demonic uh, uh, opposition can come as a distraction. Uh, you know, they may be, uh, you know, sometimes these distractions can be good things, uh, things that are important. Uh, you know, sometimes it can be even seemingly very critical things that requires our attention. Uh, uh, and these can just come like distractions. But, you know, we need to be uh, focused on the God-given vision that, you know, uh, has uh, that God is birthing in and through us. And, you know, these distractions, if we can, uh, if we get sidelined with it, if we get involved in it, you know, it will break our focus and it will result in wasted time, energy, and uh, resource uh, and the resources that God has given to us. So we need to be uh, focused on the God-given vision that He is birthing in and through us. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that demonic opposition can also, you know, come as small diversions. Um, you know, and it can, a small diversion, uh, but over time, this small diversion can become like a huge gap, a huge distance, uh, and distance us from uh, the original mission and the calling that God has given to uh, us. So it's important that we constantly check ourselves and realign ourselves to God's original vision and stay aligned to his leading. I also realize that in my life, you know, there are times when there are so much of diversion, so much of uh, distractions, uh, discouragements, you know, and I constantly ask God, God, you know, uh, you know, is this distraction really from the enemy? Uh, or is this a distraction or is something that you're using to teach me or something from you? Uh, show me God, because it seems like good things. It seems like something that is very important and critical. But is this from uh, you? Okay. Or if there's a diversion, that comes, I ask God, God, is this diversion from you or is it from the enemy? Uh, show me, speak to me. So it's important that we ask God constantly and keep checking our uh, selves. Uh, demonic uh, opposition can also come as a, you know, like a dispute, an internal dispute that can be very self-destructive, you know, family disputes, a dispute in marriage, siblings, you know, with parents, whatever, you know, or even among the people that we are working along who, you know, people that come in, enter our vision to help us to fulfill God's uh, calling, vision, and mission in our lives. Uh, so we must constantly stay stay guard against inter internal strifes, you know, whether it's in our teams or in the ministry or even in the family, because that can really destroy uh, the work of God, the vision of God, and, you know, um, just work towards unity and oneness. I, uh, you know, I realize that even as I, you know, handle uh, teams, uh, 
uh, there can be some people who are difficult and I know they are, you know, trying to bring about some kind of disunity and, and uh, division. And I just tell God, God, I don't understand. I don't know how to fight them. I don't know what to do. I don't have the time and energy really to fight them. And you have to fight this battle for me because this is your ministry. This is your kingdom. I'm just a steward. And I've just seen God, you know, remove those people or uh, you know they have just been pulled up uh, by uh, or brought to notice by somebody else and then the pastor really deals with them uh, himself okay and i just don't have anything to uh, do so when our focus is on doing god's work in unity in oneness that should be our focus you know that should be our agenda that we are not playing any politics games but uh, our you know our desire is to work in unity fulfill god's uh, 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 mission and vision then you know god will take care of the rest he will fight our battles amen and also we see that demonic opposition can come as a uh, discouragement. Uh, you know, all of us face discouragements um, and we feel like giving up, but we need to learn to encourage ourselves in God and press on. Okay. Disappointments and discouragements is part of uh, life. Uh, we can give up. Uh, there are many times I would also you know want to give up but you know god has encouraged me uh, and uh, you know when we spend time in god's presence is times when he really encourages us strengthens us and he gives us the grace and the strength to continue to run our uh, race so god when god is on our side you know uh, he empowers us and we can overcome everything that is coming against us uh, Another thing that we can uh, learn from God-given vision or remember about God-given vision, that it's always bigger than the uh, individual, okay? Every God-given vision is bigger than the single individual. And, uh, you know, why does God give us such big visions that is bigger than uh, 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 individual can handle? It's because God does not intend uh, that the individual fulfill the God-given vision alone, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is God's plan and purpose that others also enter into that mission and that vision and fulfill it along with the vision uh, bearer. Just to look at as an example, uh, Nehemiah, we know that God stirred in his heart to you know, to go back to Jerusalem, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And when he comes there, we read uh, in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12, that he does not tell anyone what God has put in his heart. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 12. But we see in, in verses 17 and 18, you know, he tells the people. And when he uh, tells the people what God has laid in his heart to do, you know, the people say, uh, Verse 18 says, okay, let's rise up and uh, build. And they set their hands to do uh, this good work. So for a short time, Nehemiah carried the God-given vision in his heart. He told no one. But when the time came, he shared the vision with others. And he invited others into that vision. Uh, and when the people heard this vision, you know, they said, come, let us build the walls of uh, Jerusalem. Another example that we can look at is in the book of Acts, you know, several places we read, you know, uh, Paul writing his, about his uh, co-workers. We can also read about uh, this in his epistles that he writes. And, uh, you know, uh, Paul, uh, uh, in each letter that he writes, you know, he ends with a list of uh, co-workers who are with him, who are supporting him, encouraging him. And he often uses the terms as fellow prisoners, uh, uh, work fellow, partner, fellow helper, you know, fellow laborers and fellow uh, servants. And there were many men and women who labored with Paul in the gospel. And, you know, uh, he writes about uh, all of them. So, you know, when uh, God imparts a vision to an individual, you know, he intends for many others to, uh, you know, uh, come alongside, engage together to carry it out. And uh, God, you know, connects the vision bearer uh, with uh, other people, uh, you know, who will uh, have the same vision so that they could together see the vision being uh, fulfilled, okay? Uh, but as vision bearers, it's important that, you know, uh, 
they grow in this uh, in their ability to share the vision with other people in the right manner uh, so that they can uh, you know uh, uh, people can understand the vision and step into it in the right way and do things that are necessary and even as people come and join uh, in our vision in fulfilling our uh, the mission that god has given to us we need to encourage them we need to celebrate them you know uh, and we must not Uh, do things that will discourage them uh, which will make them feel upset or angered uh, you know uh, uh, and if they want to you know at the time when they want to leave uh the uh, the the vision and the mission that god has given to us you know we also should not be upset and angry with them we should just bless them and you know uh, send send them send them away with god's blessing so that they can go and you know they can fulfill god's plan vision and purpose and calling for their uh, lives and even as we take on people to and uh, you know to fulfill the the vision and the mission god has given to us we need to be very cautious we need to be very wise you know who steps into our vision our calling uh, you know and we need to pray about it we need to ask god to confirm to show us if it is the right person because if we take the wrong person you know more than them being an encouragement a support uh, and helping us further god's plan and vision they can become a uh, you know great sense of discouragement disappointment frustration and can also bring an end to the vision and mission that god has placed in our uh, lives okay we'll stop here uh, we'll go for a break and then we'll come back and uh, continue thank you